Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest Railroad. Well, I've got the itch to build another 5-inch narrow-gauge locomotive. So if that sounds like fun, why don't you join me and I'll uh, talk about what I have planned. Well, we're here in the shop and before I get started, I want to give a shout out to two viewers of the Crow's Nest Railroad. John and Peter, these fine gentlemen, are from Australia, and they were in Phoenix recently. And they contacted me and said, hey, could we come by and see the Crow's Nest Railroad? They wanted to check out Rodney and see what's going on here. So we did, and it was great to meet them. John brought me this little koala all the way from Australia. And I mentioned to John, you know, this is kind of summer here in Arizona. And he said, yeah, that's usually when we come to Arizona, is in the summers. And I said, well, have you had a psychiatric exam recently? And he said, no, we love the heat. We're getting out of the Australian winter and we come to Arizona for the summer. And they like the heat. Shout out to John and Peter, a couple of great guys from Australia. And who knows, we may see them next summer. Well, what am I thinking? Well, I want to build another locomotive a little bit more powerful than the Rodney locomotive that I have. I'll show you a picture of him here. He's been my daily driver here. It is five inch narrow gauge. It's, it's a little bit bigger than one inch to the foot scale. I have a steam locomotive that is one inch to the foot, but I like a more narrow gauge experience here, partly because the equipment is slightly larger and I can fit on it more easily. So basically, I'm going to build a little bit larger locomotive than Rodney. It'll be twice the wattage that he is, and instead of 12 volts, it's going to be 24 volts. And let's take a quick run to the computer, and I can show you what I'm thinking, basically. So here you can see the basic design. Just a little uh, chassis there, and then the two rotating bogies underneath and not sure about the complete dimensions just yet that just gives you a rough idea eight motors four axles so two of the locomotives that i've built rodney and my large seven and a half inch locomotive they started out as a power chassis kit that i built upon and basically did my own body and all the extras. But the kit included the chassis and the controller and the wheels and the everything. You just had to build the body and assemble all the kit parts. Well, this time I'm going to do my own build. I'm gonna just put everything together myself and build not exactly from scratch, but pretty close to it. But why reinvent the wheel? My little uh, five inch gauge locomotive has been so reliable that I'm going to start by building on the basic framework of that locomotive. And so I have these basically powered wheel and axle assemblies. I think these are made by AccuCraft actually and sold by Maxitrack. If that's not true, maybe somebody could correct me. But essentially, it's a single axle, five inch gauge. It's got like a nylon or a Delrin gear on it. And it runs off of two 12 volt motors, one here and one here. This is the two of these I used for the Rodney on the power chassis. That's the way it comes. So I actually ordered four of these from Maxitrack in the UK. And so that is going to be the basic powertrain. So I'll have two bogies, as you saw on the computer, I'll have two bogies, four of these single axle kits, two of these per each bogey, and eight motors. And that'll give me about twice the power of Rodney, or essentially it's just like the Baldwin locomotive, the five inch gauge Baldwin that Maxitrack offers. And you might say, well, why don't you just buy the Baldwin? Well, first of all, I want more of a narrow gauge. And second of all, being here in the U.S., shipping is a real concern. So the heavier parts that you ship, the more costly it is. And I couldn't really use everything on the Baldwin anyway. 
so I'd rather kind of build my own and I thought it would be kind of fun to just kind of scratch build a locomotive from parts rather than a pre-designed kit. So we're going to do our own design, but I'm not starting from zero banging two rocks together. This is a very reliable platform for me and so I'm going to go with that. So in addition to collecting four of these two motor axle kits, I'm also collecting wiring, controller, fuses, all the giblets I'm going to need to assemble the powertrain on this locomotive. So I'm adding to my little box of goodies as the weeks go by. So the basic plan is to make two two-axle powered bogies with one chassis to tie them all together. And you could see that by the little preliminary sketch I did on Tinkercad. These little uh, axle assemblies don't come with any suspension, so I'm going to have to kind of fabricate that myself. I decided just to work on a prototype. I would go to the hardware store, Ace Hardware, and I've got eight um, of these little number 89 springs for this part, and I got four of number 92 springs for the center point. So this should allow the wheel set to flex and, and follow any undulations in the track. And so that's a starting point for me anyway. So the bogies are going to be quarter inch steel plate. It's going to add some weight and some rigidity. But I need to come up with a pattern that I can use that will help me fabricate the actual steel plate necessary. So I dug around and I came up with some quarter inch plywood and you can see here I've marked out where all the holes are and I had to notch it out here because of these Delrin gears. So in making this pattern you can see I had to have a cutout for the gear so that the weight would as much as I could even on either side of the center line. So three holes here to mount each of these little frames. I needed a center hole here for the bogey to pivot and then I'm gonna have to have some little bushings here that will uh, you know rub on the on the chassis. So I got the, all the holes drilled, marked, measured out and I had to cut these gaps out. I just ripped this on the table saw and did the same thing for this little notch. Just kind of hogged it out with the blade on the table saw. And let's see, what are some of my numbers? So this was four and three eighths and 13.75 inches. So four and three eighths inches wide and 13.75 inches from front to back. So let me first sort of assemble this. I had some, you know, spare parts laying around the shop. So I've got some little screws and I'm just going to use uh, little wing nuts and things like that. Let's go ahead and put a fabricated um, preliminary bogey together with this plywood and see what happens. All right, there's our two prototypes. And like I said, they both have got some spring action in there. And we need to space them apart enough so that they don't collide and impinge. So let me get a piece of wood and we will engineer something to tie these two together. All right, so I calculated that a three quarter inch gap should be sufficient so that these bogies don't impinge as they swivel. So I marked out my two center points and this for now will connect our two bogies. I'm gonna put uh, just some spacer washers on here for right now and connect these up. That's the idea, like this.
So, before we go any further, I'm itching to put this out onto the track and just see roughly what it feels like on the track. So let's go do that. All right, there it is on the track. We've got our two bogies and we're just tied together with this piece of MDF here. And let's just give it a push and see how far she goes and uh, what it's like on the pretty sharp turn that I have. Alrighty, let's see how it does uh, going through the turn. Okay, let me give it a kick. You can see how the bogies are twisting there. But there's plenty of play with this wheelbase. So I have not had any trouble with Little Rodney or with my steam locomotive. Even though this is like a nine foot radius turn. <laughs> so pretty tight. Okay, I'm getting good vibes from that. How about you? Well, I think that was a success. I'm really happy with that. There's plenty of room for these bogies to swing, and it had no trouble with that 9-foot radius turn. So I think I've engineered the spacing on the axles appropriately. And the next step is we've got to start thinking seriously about a chassis now and replacing these wooden parts with actual metal parts. And... Be sure to give me your suggestions down below. This is not going to be an easy, quick one, two, three build. It's going to take some time, so I'll have plenty of opportunity to digest your suggestions. And we'll see you right here next time on the Crow's Nest Fairway. Thanks for watching.